As we diagnosed from our last video, with the varnish we found in our carburetor, we made the decision that we needed to replace the carburetor on this GCV 160 Ryobi Honda. So today, we're gonna go over the step-by-step -step process on how to do that. And the first thing we need to do, make sure our ignition switch is in the off position, and for safety reasons, pop the boot off the spark plug. That way we don't have any accidental starts potentially happening as we go through this process. So from there, make sure that our fuel valve is shut off so we don't have any fuel running down into the carburetor, creating a mess as we start to remove all the outside pieces. We're gonna depress the cover, remove our air filter housing and our air filter to get access to the air filter base here. Using a 10 millimeter wrench, we're gonna remove the two carburetor studs. Now, these studs go all the way through the carburetor and the gaskets and into the head of the motor. So this is all gonna kind of slide out in one piece. So just be aware of that. Supporting the carburetor a little bit, we're gonna pull these studs out all the way, getting access to the air filter base. On the back side, we're gonna have a breather hose that we will wanna make sure to pop off to remove that completely. From here, we're gonna have access to our choke rod, our governor rod and throttle spring, as well as our fuel hose. We're gonna to wanna to remove each, each one of these as we go forward and make note on the back with your governor rod, which hole the governor rod goes into as well as where the spring goes into the back. We're gonna remove the clip to get access to the fuel line and remove the fuel line from the carburetor. And then now we're gonna remove our choke rod and our governor rod. Just tip them up, they slide out and remove the spring as well. That's how you remove the carburetor. Depending on the age and the usage of your machine, um, one, you're gonna wanna make sure your mating surfaces are as clean as possible when installing the new carburetor with your new gaskets. So we're gonna wanna take some carb cleaner, spray it off a little bit, just to clean up any debris that may have been accumulated over time. as well as hit our base here with some cleaner too, just to clean it up as well. Now that it's all cleaned up, ready to go, it's time to install our new carburetor. And orientation wise, you're gonna have your choke rod assembly in the front and that's gonna face outward. Your throttle assembly is gonna be facing the back. And remember the positioning of our choke rod and our governor rod and throttle spring. I'm gonna reinsert these back into place. Now that we have our linkages in place, reinstall our fuel line. Making sure to put our clamp back on so that the fuel line stays securely in place over the nipple. From there. We're going to reinstall the remaining of the carburetor parts, air filter box, breather hose, and our new gaskets. I'm gonna put our carburetor studs in first. And from there, we're going to install our, our air cleaner gasket over top. And we're gonna slide the studs right through the carburetor. In doing so, we're gonna take our breather hose, hook it back up 
to our air cleaner base. We want to make sure our air vane gasket is installed on the back side, just like this. And we're going to place the studs in the place. And then we're going to fasten these hand tight. So once we have these tightened just enough, we're going to use our 10 millimeter and a torque wrench and then fully secure these down to 7.2 foot pounds of pressure. Once secure, reinstall our air filter and our air filter cover. And before we go test our engine, we want to make sure to drain our fuel tank and add some fresh fuel. We'll show you that here next. Before we turn our fuel valve on and test start our motor, we want to ensure that we have all the bad gas out of the fuel tank. So we want to remove our clip from the nipple of the fuel valve, remove our hose, drain it into a safe container. Now that the fuel has stopped draining from the fuel tank and before we hook it back up, Honda usually has a fuel strainer filter inside the fuel line and base of the tank that I will like to remove, clean out and see if any debris is in it just for one final step. So we'll remove our clip again. access to the fuel filter that looks pretty good so you can either replace it or it slides right out take some carb cleaner clean it off and out ensuring that there's no debris on it or it's not gummed up from bad fuel insert it back in and then we'll put this back in the tank In reverse order, we'll put all of our clips back on, holding the line back onto the nipple of the tank. And insert our fuel line back onto our fuel shutoff. Once that's all installed, last step, add fuel and test fire our engine. Now that we've replaced the carburetor on our engine, it's time to test it. So we've added some fresh ethanol-free fuel to our fuel tank, hooked up our pump to water. So when we're testing these, you wanna make sure that you have water running through the pump so that it's not running dry. Running it dry or too long with water standing in the pump can cause damage and cause failure to your pump. So got the water hooked up, want to get the air out of the lines, the pump and your, uh, your gun. So we'll let that cycle through a little bit and go through our starting procedure. Switch in the on position, fuel valve open and choke. Now that we know our engine's gonna run, we do wanna make sure that the engine's running at the right RPMs to properly cool itself and operate the pump as we go forward. So the next step is gonna be checking the RPMs. We're gonna use a digital tachometer, much like this one, to see where we're sitting. And Honda recommends their engines to be around 3,150 RPMs, plus or minus 150, depending on the job that it's going through. So. We're looking somewhere probably around the 3250 mark uh, on this unit. And we're gonna take our cable, wrap it around our spark plug boot multiple times so we get a good connection. And 
I'm gonna get reading and we'll get our engine started, see where we're at. So as you can see, once it got to fully under load, uh, we're running just shy of 3,500 RPMs, which is running a little bit too high. So what we need to do is adjust that. And to adjust the RPMs, you have your throttle bracket here. We push back to decrease the RPMs and we push forward to increase. So in this case, we'll wanna push it backwards just a hair. And then we'll see where we're sitting at. RPM wise. After a few adjustments, we're finally able to level it off there around 3280 on the RPM range, which would be ideal for this unit.